Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my little baby has arrived <laughs> to trek in the mountains. But she's getting big, but still I can carry her. Not bad for old men. <laughs> <laughs> From the age of three and a half months, my girl traveled with me, alone in the car. We built the Isha Foundation in a Maruti 800, traveling thousands of miles. In one calendar year, or actually in fourteen months, I did hundred and thirty-five thousand kilometers on my Maruti, okay <laughs> So, she was three and a half months old, one hand on her in the front seat strapped and my right leg doesn't go easy, you know, boom. So she grew up in the car till she was four years of age. I thought I'll never send her to school because we had bonded and she's, she had such wisdom <laughs> because she's seen the road, she's seen the people, she's been in all kinds of families. I thought I shouldn't mess this up by sending her to a school <laughs> But you know, that age group, that company, unless you have a whole cricket team of children at home, just one child doesn't work, just keeping them alone because they may become too old when they're young. So I put her to school after that. After that she's always continuously in one hostel to another. And… Uh, but we kept a very active engagement thanks to the cell phones. Earlier it was the black phone, I would stop somewhere on the highway because I know only at a particular time, you can call her in the school. The school opens that phone time only one hour. So I am somewhere on a highway, find that black phone and get on and for that one hour I am in the phone with her. That side for her, all the children outside are screaming at her. Here at the booth, all the people are banging on the booth. <laughs> so I always had this thing at that time. I am driving on the highway, I have many, many phone calls to make, local, international, all kind. First I would get down and go to that phone booth guy and give him one five thousand rupees. He'll be surprised, See, just, just hold it, <laughs> deposit <laughs> And I get into the phone booth and now I am a valued customer <laughs> The other people come and they want to make the call within three minutes and they are all standing in a queue and making faces at me and just gesticulating but the, that guy says, no, don't disturb him <laughs> Because straight five thousand rupees, I'm making international calls, all calls because there were no cell phones at that time. So I find this time and speak and after that she went to college and then everything, whatever she's been pursuing, always on phone and uh, we've kept a very active engagement and uh, we've never really stayed home. If she comes for vacation, next day we'll be traveling somewhere, 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 but never really at home, but a very active relationship. I kept with her, largely on the phone <laughs> thanks to all the telephone waves that are going on. So, it was such an active engagement. Why I'm saying this is, and whenever I saw there's a certain intelligence in every child, I'm not trying to project this is a special child, no, she's just normal, brought up in a special way for sure. So the thing is just this, if she comes home or if she is with me, I leave all my important decisions in her hands. She, she's only five, six. People's problems, foundation issues, administration, I just put it to her. She comes up with her own wacky solutions. But five out of ten times, she would come out with something brilliant. This is not… I want you to understand I am not projecting this is a special child. It is just that most people never give that opportunity to a child's intelligence because they want to do boo-boo-boo-boo, do-do-do-do with the child.